And we have a Fox's alert as President Trump's decision to withdraw from the Iranian nuclear deal has sparked angry reaction in Tehran. Thousands of people have taken to the streets, as you can see there on the right. As officials in Iran reportedly say that the country will now prepare for, quote, an industrial scale production of nuclear fuel. Meanwhile, President Trump is expressing hope of hammering out a new deal with Iran, but with tougher conditions. I hope to be able to make a deal with them, a good deal, a fair deal, a good deal for them, better for them, better for them. But we cannot allow them to have nuclear weapons. And for more on this, we're joined by Ambassador Danny Danan. He is the Israeli ambassador to the United Nations. Ambassador Danan, welcome to Fox News Channel tonight. Thank you for having me again. Are you concerned or how concerned are you that Iran is now saying they may uh, start nuclear production of some sort on an industrial scale? Nothing new. We knew about it. Prime Minister Netanyahu exposed a few weeks ago the archive of the atomic plant of the Iranians. And we saw in the archive that they have been talking about it, they have been planning it. So the agreement was a bad agreement. We are very happy that President Trump decided to pull out from this agreement. There were four main reasons that we were not happy with this agreement from the beginning. First one is the inspection. Nobody can inspect anything. You cannot go into military facilities. You have to tell them in advance if you want to call. Let me just stop you there. That's unbelievable that, that Tehran has the power to decide whether or not inspect international inspectors can go into a military site? Where do you think they're going to be making a, a, a nuclear research? You need to ask for our permission. Mm -hmm. that, that's a joke. The second issue is the ballistic missile program. It, nobody spoke about it, but you need to cover the ballistic missile program. The third issue is the expiration date. This is a crucial issue. What will happen in seven years? I think they're lying. But even if they're not lying, in seven years, they will be able to do whatever they want. And the fourth issue is the money. They have billions of dollars now that they send all over the Middle East to promote terrorism in Yemen, in Lebanon, and in Syria. And do you think that because of the sunset clause, that they are using that as, a, as, as a, the next eight years to develop ballistic missiles and then move into a nuclear program? Absolutely. What? And if you look at the 55,000 pages that the, our secret service were able to obtain from Tehran, you know exactly what the goal is. The goal is to obtain nuclear weapons, to use the ballistic missiles, to threaten the region. That is why I think the president was moved with a very strong and bold move, and we are thankful for that. And what about those who say that this uh, is very dangerous, that the president has made a, a wrong decision that will only inflame the Middle East and cause Iran to have a nuclear weapon sooner? So what they were advising us, to wait seven years and then to wait for their decisions. I think what the president did, he showed leadership. I think it will help him to actually negotiate a better deal. And I think, you know, when I speak with uh, my colleagues in the UN from Arab countries, they are grateful for the leadership that we are seeing coming from the White House. Yeah, there's an amazing uh, coalition, basically, between Saudi Arabia and your country. I mean, who would have in the past thought about that? And let me just read you a tweet that the president tweeted just moments ago. He said, quote, it's speaking of lying, Iran's military budget is up more than 40 percent since the Obama negotiated nuclear deal was reached. Just another indicator that it was all a big lie, but not any more. With the withdrawal from this deal, what do you expect will happen with Tehran? Do you think this will cause enough pressure for Tehran to either fall or will the hardliners be emboldened? First of all, the president is absolutely right about the budget, but it's not only about the military budget. There are proxies. So now they have more money to send to their proxies. In Syria today, they have 82,000 militants that are paying their salaries. They're bringing people from Pakistan, Hezbollah. Afghanistan, Iraqis, Hezbollah. So I, I think now they will start to feel the pressure. They were not happy in Tehran this week, and for a good reason. I think the Europeans will have to decide whether they want to continue to do business with the U.S. or with the Iranians. So I think in the long run, the Europeans will have to follow the U.S. Uh, Ambassador, stay right here. We have got an historic day on Monday we want to uh, talk to you about, but we have a report from the Middle East from Jerusalem about that. Arthel? We do, Eric. Thank you. Also in the Holy Land, the U.S. preparing to open its new embassy in Jerusalem on Monday with at least 50 diplomats expected to staff the new facility when the door is open. The move comes as fighting intensifies along the Israeli-Gaza border. Benjamin Hall has more now from Jerusalem. Benjamin.
Arthel, what a very busy week it has been in the Middle East. Starting off with President Trump's decision to pull out of the Iran deal, followed just a few days later by Iranian rockets fired into northern Israel, and hours later, Israel's response, which saw them destroy almost all military emplacements inside Syria. Well, now we look ahead to the major opening of the U.S. Embassy here in Jerusalem, which promises to be quite an event. Officials say thousands of officers will be deployed to secure the perimeter and protect visiting American officials. Ivanka Trump, Jared Kushner, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin and other government officials from state and Congress will be here attending. President Trump tweeted yesterday saying, Big week next week when the American embassy in Israel will be moved to Jerusalem. Congratulations to all. President Trump won't be here in person, but he will give a speech via video link at the ceremony. The week is politically significant. Not only is the U.S. moving its embassy, but Israel celebrates 51 years since Jerusalem's reunification and 70 years since the founding of Israel. All this within the framework of a new, clear U.S. policy of greater support for Israel. The opening of the embassy coincides with the culmination of more than six weeks of protests along the Gaza border. And on Tuesday, Palestinians mourn what they call the catastrophe of the creation of the Jewish state. Recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel has been a campaign promise for numerous presidents. However, only President Trump has followed through on this. It is, however, also controversial, and the Palestinians have walked away from the negotiating table as a result, saying they too have a right to Jerusalem. Arthel? Benjamin Hall. Thank you, Benjamin. Eric? And Arthel, for more on this, let's bring back Ambassador Danny Danan, who's the Israeli ambassador to the United Nations. Ambassador Danan, did you ever think you'd actually see the day? when the U.S. Embassy would be moved to Jerusalem, as it's been promised before, but now it's been done. It's, it's amazing, Eric. President Trump promised during the campaign, and he's doing it. He promised to the American people. It's a great day for us in Israel. More countries will follow the U.S. and will move their embassies to Jerusalem. Jerusalem has been the capital of the Jewish people since the days of King David. But now the United States is recognizing Jerusalem as our capital. It will be a big celebration in Israel, and we will, we will enjoy the presence of so many dignitaries. And for us, it is very symbolic that we're going to celebrate Jerusalem Day when a new embassy is coming to Jerusalem. Talk about that symbolism and the message to the Middle East with this move. If you want to achieve peace, you have to be realistic. And for decades, we have seen so many envoys and leaders coming to the Middle East and trying to achieve a, a wishful thinking peace. President Trump is coming. He's very realistic. Everybody knows that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, period. So he says, let's move on. Let's put it on the table and move to, to the other issues. So I think this is the right approach to move forward. And he's getting more respect at the UN. He's getting more respect in, in the Middle East. And I think it will help him to move forward with his future ideas. What about those critics who say this is needlessly provocative, that it will incite violence uh, and, and anger the Palestinians, for example? We saw what happened in the last uh, 20 years. We have seen violence, incitement all over with all those peace initiatives. I think this is the right approach. I think it will bring, and we're seeing it already with other Arab countries, it brings them closer to Israel, and hopefully it will bring them back to the table. Do you think this coalition of uh, Sunni Arab allies uh, and Israel, that, that has just been astounding, how do you think this will affect the peace process, and do you see a one-state, two-state solution? How do you see this playing out with these new moves? We proved that we can achieve peace. We signed an agreement with Egypt after a few wars, with Jordan. We can achieve peace, but we need a partner among the Palestinians. We don't see it today, but we do see partners among regional players in the region. We want them to come, help us, and maybe with their support, we'll be able to move forward. And your message finally to the Palestinian Authority? Stop with the violence. Don't send your kids to demonstrate. Don't send them to become human shields. Come back to negotiate and stop the incitement. Ambassador Danny Denon at the United Nations, thank you for coming tonight. You'll be back at the Security Council uh, this week uh, and I guess watching the opening here in New York on television. Thank you very much, right. Eric. Ambassador, good to thank see you. you. Thank you.